Hello everybody, this is part 3 on how to make a shooter game in Scratch. In this video, I will make the player be able to get cash from killing a zombie. I will also add a shop where the player can buy power-ups and items. I have incorporated some of your guys' suggestions from the previous videos, and I decided that these features would be best to add to the current game. Anyways, so far I have this. The player moves around and can switch guns and shoot zombies and also the player loses hearts when it touches a zombie like this so anyways let's make it so that the player gets cash when it defeats a zombie so let's first go to data and create a variable i'll just name it cash click ok and now let's go to the zombie sprite and when it dies then it drops a set amount of cash so let's just go to control, grab an if statement, and let's say if the zombie is equal to normal, which are the green ones that have 3 health, then let's change cash by 1. So the player gets 1 cash, and then put it right here. And let's do the same thing for the strong zombies. So if zombie equals strong, Then change cash by, let's say, 2. So now if we try this, then the zombies drop its given amount of cash. So the green ones drop 1, and the orange ones drop 2 coins, like that. So now, the cash variable doesn't look so good by itself. So let's create a number sprite, which will blend better with the game. So let's create a new sprite, and let's create the numbers 1 through 9, and then 0. So I'll just type it right here, 1, I'll move it a bit like this. I'll duplicate the costumes, so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 0. And now go back to your scripts. And we will essentially make this sprite here copy the number inside of the cache variable. So I won't explain this as thoroughly because I already did in my video how to make a clicker game in Scratch. So if you want to check it out, then it's in the description below. So anyways, let's go to events, grab a one flag clicked, and then let's create a new variable. I'll call it digits, and then click for this sprite only right here, and then click OK. And let's just set digits to 1, and uh, go to control, grab a repeat, and then let's just change this to 30, and then drag a create clone of myself and go to data, and drag a change digits by, and then let's just leave it to 1, and then go to looks, and select hide. Now let's create the clones, so go to control, grab a when it start as a clone, and then grab a show, and grab a forever loop, and then go to looks again, set size to, let's just say 200, and then go to motion, grab a go to, and then go to operators, grab a minus, and a multiplication. Drag the multiplication right here. And then go to data, drag the digits. And then let's just say multiplied by 20, and then minus uh, 160. And then drag this into the X. And then let's just say Y 160. So this is the X and Y position of each clone. And now let's also drag a go to front. I'll just drag inside the forever loop right here. And then go to control, grab a if else statement. And go to operators, grab a less than. So if length of. And go to data, if the length of cache is less than its digit. Then go to looks and then hide. Else show. And switch costume to, go to operators, letter, 
uh, digits of cash. Again, I didn't go into a detailed explanation, but I do have one in how to make a clicker game in Scratch, which I will put in the description below. That explains these two scripts in much more detail. So anyways, this right here should be the exact same as the cash variable. So let's test it out. This is 8. And it's 9. And the cash variable is 9. It's 10. Cash variable is 10. 11. Cash variable is 11. And 12. So it works. And also, I forgot to set cash to 0 when flag is clicked. So let's do that. And now you can hide the cash variable. And I think I'll have money on top of the lives. So yeah, I'll just first change the size a bit. I think, yeah, 150 is fine. And let's just move the hearts down right here. And the money right here. Let's change the X. Let's just say 200 minus 200 minus 250. Okay, 240. Uh, 238. So yeah, right here. Oh yeah, and I do need the dollar sign. So I'll just like put it in the hearts here. I'll just do a dollar sign right here. And I'll move it, like, down a bit, right here about. So I'll do the same for these. I'll just delete these and then duplicate, duplicate. And then move these, like this, one and two. And then, like this. Alright, so now I have a dollar sign. And also, I'll just move the digits a bit to the right. So, like, 200 to 10... 20 I'd say right around here and I'll make the cash smaller so like 100% yeah I think maybe 120 right here and then I'll move the Y position like around here and yeah so sorry about that I'm just trying to um, make sure it's good so now we have a working cash sprite. And the next thing we're going to do is a shop. So let's get on to that. So what I was thinking is that when you press P, then the game pauses and the shop rolls up. So I'll just first create the shop sprite. So I'm going to create a new sprite and then draw my shop right here. And I think I'm done. This is going to be our shop. So when we press P, this is going to show up. So let's just go to events, drag a when flag clicked, and then go to control, drag a forever loop. And if, go to sensing, grab key space pressed, change that to P. So if key P is pressed, then this should show. So let's just create a new variable. So let's go to data, and then create a new variable. I'll just name it shop open and then click OK. And let's just set that to no at the start. And then set this to yes if P is pressed. And then go to control, grab a wait until. And then go to sensing, actually uh, operators. And then grab a not, wait until not. Key P is pressed. So yeah, this makes sure this action only happens once no matter if you like tap the P or hold it down. So now let's first hide the shop. And when P is pressed, then I want it to sort of glide onto the screen. So let's create a new variable. I'll just call it uh, Y velocity. So Y vel for short. And make sure to check for this sprite only. And then let's first set that to zero. Then let's create a new event. And let's just say broadcast, um, show click okay and when i receive show then go to control grab a repeat i'll just say 10 and then change y vel by let's just say um two and then duplicate this and then 
change the y value by negative 2. And let's also go to motion and then change y by uh, y velocity. And let's also make it start at the very bottom of the screen. So like right here. So x is 0, y is negative 380. Now if we test this, then if p is pressed, then it should go up. And oh yeah, I forgot to add a show. So add it right here when key p is pressed. And now let's test this. Okay, I think I should make it go up a bit more. So repeat, let's just say 15 and then 15. Let's try it now. That's a bit too much. I'll say 12 and 12 and then change y value by 2.2 and then negative 2.2. I'm just playing around with these numbers. You can do it also. So if we try it. All right, a bit more up. So like 2.3, negative 2.3. Let's try it again. Uh, nope, almost there. So yeah, this takes a lot of trial and error, so I'm just doing that right now. And yeah, okay, I think that's good. So now I'll start explaining about this. So first, when flag is clicked, it goes all the way to Y, negative 380, which is all the way down here. And it sets a shop open to no and Y velocity to zero. And the store also hides. And then in a forever loop, it uh, changes y by y velocity, which is 0, and checks if the key p is pressed. And if it is, then it shows, which is right around here. You can barely see it. And then set the variable shop open to yes, which we're not using yet, but we'll use it later. And then broadcast show, and wait until not key p is pressed. So let's make sure this action inside of the key p is pressed only happens once. That's why I added the wait until not key p is pressed. So since it broadcasts show, when it receives show, then it repeats 12 times, change y velocity by 2.4. So since this is constantly changing y by y velocity, when this repeat repeats the first time, then it changes y velocity by 2.4. So what this does is that it changes y velocity by 2.4, since y velocity is 2.4. And then when it repeats the second time, it changes y velocity by 2.4 again. So now y velocity is 4.8. So it changes it by 4.8. And then it repeats again, it would be uh, 7.2. And it changes it by 7.2 and so on until it repeats 12 times. And then it decreases by 2.4 12 times. So that's why you see it sort of slowly going up and then going up faster and faster and then slowly going slower. So that's what this code here does. So let me show you it again. When you press P, then it just does this. You can sort of see it glide in. So yeah, that's going to be my shop. I'll just check something again for one second. And okay, I think it's fine. But uh, just to make sure, I'll just set the y velocity to 0 at the end of this because sometimes the y velocity at the end is like negative 0.0001 or something like that. So I just want to make sure it's 0. As a matter of fact, I'll just change it to 0 0.00000 like that. So yeah, this should be good. So yeah, now let's make it so that everything in the background pauses when you open the shop. So that's where the variable shop open comes into play. So all we need to do is to add an if statement and add an equal sign and a shop open equals to no. And that's all we need. So let's just put that into every single sprite we don't want moving when we open the shop. So I'll just duplicate this and then put it into here, this into here. And this into here. So now let's just test it. The player shouldn't be able to move when I open the shop. So yep, it doesn't move. It doesn't do anything. So that's good. Now let's do the same thing for the bullets. So like if the player was shooting and a bullet comes out, it would pause completely when the shop opens. So I'll just drag this into the bullet sprite. And let's put this into the repeat until. Alright, so the thing is, you want to make sure to put one of these into the most inside loop. So let's just say there was a repeat until 
inside of this forever loop, all right? So like right here. So you want to make sure to put one inside the forever loop and also the repeat until. Because the code inside the repeat until runs a lot of times until its conditions are met, and then it runs this code again. So if I didn't have this code in here, and the shop open is no while the code was in here, then it wouldn't stop until it got out of the repeat until. So make sure to put a shop open equals no into every single loop. So that includes repeat, forever, and repeat until. So yeah. Now I'm finished with the bullet. Let's do the zombies next. So let's put it in this forever loop. I'll create a clone and then put it right in here. And let's do the same thing inside of this code right here. Actually, make sure the wait 1.2 seconds is outside of the if shop open equals no. So let's do that. That's pretty important. So yeah, now, since we're done, I think, let's test it out. So if we press P, let's just like shoot some bullets. I'll shoot some slower bullets. Press P, everything pauses. As you can see here, if we hide the shop, then everything behind it is paused. Like, I can't do anything right now. So yeah, let's just try it again. So I just shoot some stuff and then press P, and the shop appears. And now, I don't think the shop is very accurate in the Y position. It's a bit different every single time, so I'll just move it to where I want. And then, I'll just uh, put it right here so that this is more accurate. So, let's try it again. And, what the... Oh yeah, I forgot. So, I'm going to put at the end, actually. Like this. Uh, where is it? Oh yeah, I forgot to press P. So press P. And then yeah, this shows up at Y032 every single time. So just remember, if you're using decimals, especially with velocity, they're not the most accurate. So there are some very slight variations with the placement. So you just got to be careful with that. I'll just try it again. And alright. I think this is perfect placement because you can see the lives and cash. That was actually uh, accidental, but I think that's really good. And one more thing, I think I'll make the whole screen a bit lighter, just for some good background effects. So I'll just get a new sprite. I'll just make this black and go to zero, zero. Grab a when flag clicked, put that in there. And then make sure to hide. Actually, you can just make it show and just uh, set ghost effect. To 100 so that pretty much makes it invisible but it's still here it's still shown but it's just invisible and now go to events when I receive show so when the shop is opened then it sets ghost effect to let's just say um, 60 so now let's try that and all right so we need the opposite of that um I actually meant to make the screen white, so make it white. And now let's try that. So I try this. And now the screen is brighter, but I actually want the shop, cash, and lives to remain on top of the white screen. So let's actually make this go to front when I receive show here. And do the same thing with lives. So when I receive show, then go to front. And yeah, I think this should work. Cool. So as you see here, the background is all under this white uh, backdrop, and the shop, cash, and lives are on the front. Also, everything behind it is paused. And yeah, there is a problem. So when you press P multiple times, it still goes up. So let's fix that. Let's actually continue the game when P is pressed again. So let's go to control, grab an if statement, go to operators, grab an equals, go to data, Grab a shop open. So if shop open is equals to no, then run everything inside of here. Actually, I'll just add the show inside of here. So like this. And then duplicate this. And if shop open equals yes, then show. You don't really need that, so let's take it out. And then set shop open to no, since the game will resume. And then let's just broadcast uh, hide. Click OK, and then put your way until back into here, 
and duplicate this show right here and change this to hide. And let's just take out this second repeat and delete it. And let's change this to negative 2.4 because all it does is go down and then disappear. So let's grab a hide and put it in here and take out this go to. Actually, I'll leave it in and then go to uh, negative 380 at the end and then set y velocity to zero. And yeah, I think that's good. So let's try it. All right, I think we need to change these two if statements into an if else. So just drag this into here and then drag this into the else. So now I think the problem should be fixed. Let's just try it. So the shop opens and then click it again. Then the shop closes. So it sort of disappeared a bit too early. So let's just repeat this a bit more, like repeat 16 times. Now let's try it again. Open, close. All right, like I think 18 times works better. So open, whoops, um, open, and then close. All right, I think that's pretty good. I'll just change YVEL to negative two so that it goes down a bit slower. So open, close. So yeah, I think that's pretty good. So now another thing, when you hold, it doesn't work again. So let's just try dragging the wait until in here and also have one in here. So now if we try this, it still doesn't work. So let's see. Yep. I think we can put the wait until um, above this if else. So this should work. So yeah, if we hold this, it doesn't do anything. And then when it release it, then it does it. So yeah, I think this works now. And one more thing, if you press P a lot of times, it doesn't work. So if you like spam P, then it goes up. And yeah, because it runs the show a lot of times, even when it's not done yet. So let's just create a new variable. I'll just call it uh, done, and then I'll just make it for this part only. Click OK, and let's first set done to uh, no. Actually, a yes, because it's not doing anything. And when it receives show, then set done to no. And then after it's done, set done to yes. Let's do the same thing for hide. So set done to no, and set done to yes. Now let's go to control, grab an if statement if and then equals and if done is equal to yes then run the things otherwise it does nothing so let's try that that's a lot of times it doesn't do anything until it's done like that so yeah it works now like this but now the uh white screen doesn't go away so let's also do that so let's go to the white screen and then go to events let's drag in a hide so when i receive hide then set ghost effect back to 100. So now, this works. There's a working shop and it acts like a pause screen also. So yeah, I'm pretty much done. And I just need to add some power-ups or gun upgrades. So anyways, that's it for this tutorial. If you want a part 4, make sure to like this video and subscribe while you're at it. Also, feel free to give suggestions on what I should make next, and ask me if you need any help. Anyways, thanks for watching. See ya.